Hey, good afternoon. It's a bit. It's December 15th, and this is a second recording of the first video. I got some feedback that the audio was bad, and I, upon listening to it myself, I noticed some glitching in the middle of the video. So, because I cannot edit within the video, I'm going to just re-record. So, the new article I wrote for you is entitled, Our Winter Rest, The Seed in the Barn. In the Hanukkah season, we shared about that, how all the reference that the Lord made in Matthew 24 to Hanukkah and all the other references in Scripture to the Feast of Dedication, how Hanukkah is so rich with hope as both the Scriptures, the heavens, and even the enemy testifies of the Lord's soon coming. So we read in Isaiah 7, 14, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. God is with us. And that is confirmed in the verses from Haggai chapter 4, 18 and 19 especially. We shared about that uh, in the former set of videos about Kislev 24, 9, 24 being the date of the Lord's conception. And if we look at verse 19 in particular, the question is being raised if the seed is yet in the barn. And when I restudied that and went into the Strong's Concordance, I found a beautiful layer of meaning in the words seed and barn, which are prophetically foreshadowing not just the Lord's uh, conception and the fertilized egg being nested in the womb, but also a prophetic meaning of us, the bride, being birthed into heaven soon. So we shared previously how the scriptures give us insight that the Lord's conception and the onset of the blessings that the Lord bestowed to us from Kislev 24th onwards, they are uh, commending us to consider it. And the Lord is emphasizing that by repeating it. Verse 19 appears to affirm the notion, as the question is asked, is deceit yet or still in the barn? Let us indeed consider in which direction the words seed and barn spoken of in this verse are directing our attention towards. So the word translated as seed, that is Strong's 2233, is elsewhere translated as child or posterity. And the word barn could point to the temporary abode, the dwelling or tabernacle, much like a womb where a seed after conception is nested, and that happens in between the second and the sixth day after conception. So prophetically, this could imply a time frame after the conception on, on Kislev 24 of in between two up to six days of the fertilized egg nesting in the womb of the mother. And that is a temporary dwelling, but it is also the home where the fertilized egg will nest until full fruition. So if we look at the word Savuabel and his function, there is underlying meaning in the scriptures as well. So Savuabel speaks to us in layers too. He was a governor, as such, a type of Jesus as ruler, and his name means seed of Babylon or planted in Babylon. And when God told Abraham, in your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed, we find that in Genesis 22 and 28, the seed that the father was referring to was Jesus, no less than 42 generations later. So we know that believers in Christ are the spiritual seed of Abraham. We're grafted in by faith in the works of the glorious seed, Jesus himself. And after our second birth, our salvation, our birth into faith and eternal life, we are now eagerly waiting, anticipating our birth into heaven to be transformed when called up home to nest and rest in our heavenly home. Paul is also teaching on the seed of Abraham, and that is listed in the article over here. 
And Haggai also weighs in on the matter in the second chapter. And he describes the harvest time of the grain, and specifically this grain is the grain to be stored or intended for future provision. And seed could also then describe a child who has been conceived but is not yet born. Thus, it is dwelling in a temporary abode, according to the root word of barn. So, understanding that Jesus was conceived on Kislev 24, it is a really fitting and apt application of what God means when he says, From this day forward, I will bless you. So the light of the world came to sojourn or dwell within Mary as she was overshadowed by the Spirit during the darkest days of the year to bless us with eternal light, coming to light, being born 271 days later. So inherent in the name of Noah, meaning rest and comfort, we find a picture of what the Lord is promising to us to find rest and peace in and with him and here we see a picture of the almond tree in its winter rest because the season of dormancy for the almond tree is december and january that's going to come up a little bit later in the article matthew eleven twenty eight, come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and i will give you rest take my yoke upon you and learn of me for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Exodus thirty-three fourteen, And he said, My presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. So the combination of the Lord coming with us as light and giving us rest in our travels, but our destination being eternal rest in and with him, is connected in these two verses. So the almond trees we shared a lot about in previous articles, they're entering into dormancy in winter time. So as the temperatures from the late fall continue to drop, the almond tree, the tree of life in the garden, and the inspiration for the temple menorah enters a period of rest that lasts through December, early January. At this time, the tree has already dropped all of its leaves naturally or through an application of zinc has entered into its yearly rest. And I find it really interesting that the uh, element of zinc actually helps uh, the tree come to rest and it also helps our bodies to fight coronaviruses. So the tree is maintaining a low level of water use, water intake, the living water of the word, and starch consumption. And the low flow of starch through the tree is needed as a catabolic breakdown of starch to sugar helps and prevents the sap from freezing. Pruning and shaping is generally done during the almond tree's winter dormancy starting the first growing season and keeping the center of the tree open to airflow and sunlight while garden debris and weeds are being cleared to avoid mold but also for small animals to not nest in them and chew on the trunks and if you apply this to ourselves spiritually we can find that application of open airflow of preventing small sins to enter into our life and the uh, clearing of weeds and debris. And I hope that we have actually entered our last cycle of rest, but we know that the wild and wayward almond trees, they will stand to shortly be pruned and cleaned of dead wood and unfruitful white branches in a far less delicate manner than we have undergone. So like we are the spiritual seed of Abraham by grace through faith alone, we're about to be birthed into our heavenly home through the narrow way, much like a fertilized egg is being transported through the fallopian tubes into the uterus. And we understand that it's not by our own merit, but by God's finished work and the sacrifice of Christ and us yielding fully to that and in loving obedience to the Lord and his will. And to whom did God swear? 
that they would never enter his rest if not through those who disobeyed. So we see that they were not able to enter because of their unbelief. Unlike the Israelites, whose unbelief prevented them from entering the promised land, save uh, Joshua and Caleb, we are able to enter God's heavenly rest by faith in him, in his finished work, faith which is a gift from him by grace. So let us glance at the calendar and prophetic markers for the coming week. So we can see that the total solar eclipse over Chile and Argentina is right behind us. And today is actually the day of the expected new moon sighting. The moon is at 4.8%. So if the weather is conducive, it should be able to be sighted in Jerusalem later today. So Kislev 27, that was actually the Ark liftoff day, the last day of Noah's flood rains. And afterward, the water started swelling and churning and the Ark was lifted up above. And the people had met their demise, but Noah and his family were lifted up above the earth, much like we are now waiting for the rapture to be lifted up toward heaven prior to the onset of tribulation and the waters of judgment breaking forth. So the total uh, solar eclipse over Chile and South America is actually connected to the birthing grounds of the false prophet, Pope Francis. And he has just published one of his documents, which is exposing what the beast system uh, will entail, in this case, financially. He's proposing what he's calling centralized capitalism. It is actually a repackaging of totalitarian rule and communism and he's collaborating with what i call the three satanic stooges namely the rothschilds rockefeller and mastercard and this celestial event of the total solar eclipse is actually the third of recent celestial events they're all pointing to the unholy trinity so we had the total solar eclipse over Chile, Argentina. And just prior to that, this week, we had the Venus, Venus moon conjunction, which was visible at a portion of the east coast of the U.S., but especially over Hawaii, uh, the presumed birthing grounds of Obama. And just prior to that, in the summer, we had the annual solar eclipse on June 21st which was the induced birthday of Prince William. So if you want to read more about the Unholy Trinity, you can click the link over here. So if the new moon is sighted tonight, um, we have a reminder that the first of Tibet, the first of the 10th month, was actually the month when Esther was taken to her king, to King Ahasuerus leading her ultimately to become his queen. And the 10th of Tibet is when Esther appeared before Ahasuerus for the first time and was chosen by him to be queen. And in the next video, I will give you my understanding of what the heavens declare this week, in addition to another really big sign in the narrative of David and Jonathan, of David the bright type being God at the time of the new moon. And there is a reference in scripture that the stone of Ezel, where they are parting, the stone of departure is actually the winter solstice. So that holds a lot of promise for us for this Hanukkah season. So I hope to see you in the next.